The Bible is the greatest book ever written. It far supersedes anything ever conceived by man. On one occasion, I decided to read all the works of Shakespeare, a book about this thick with a couple of thousand pages in it. And after I'd gone through so much of it, I happened to look back on the cover again, and it says the tragedies of Shakespeare. And I, I thought, well, now, isn't that interesting? We think that he is the greatest writer who ever lived, and he is a tragedy. And he creates tragedies. But the Word of God is so different, it creates hope. <laughs> hope beyond this world of tears and heartache and disappointment. And, and that the Word of God creates something within us that causes us to want and desire to live in the right way to go to heaven. The opening of the book is called Genesis, the book of the beginnings. And it is so interesting to observe how God created the heavens and the earth. Men with all of his capabilities mentally have not conceived at this point how this world got here at all. One says it begins with a big bang. And another says, no, it begins as an amoeba. They, they go from the biggest to the least, and in between is a void they do not know. They change their minds about it. There are many scientists today turning back to the Word of God for the answer, the book of Genesis, because the bang nor the amoeba satisfies their hearts. Then straight through the Bible, of its 66 books, we have revelation of who we are and what we are. Then we come to the last book of the Bible, and it gives us the climax of man and his sinful, uh, audacious means and ways of coming against God, fighting God, rebelling against God, generation after generation, until in the climax there's the battle between good and evil. And who wins? Come on, who wins? And so uh, we're in that book. I hope each one has a teaching syllabus because there's so much in there that we possibly couldn't cover in a class. But you can, you can cover it there as you study with it. And it would be very interesting for you. We have audio and video that you can secure along with it. Uh, we are dealing with, uh, uh, with, with chapter 3 in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. In the book of Revelation, one of the most notable things regarding it, that it is not a sealed book. Now, there are places in the Word of God where God said, seal it up till the time of the end. But in the book of Revelation, it is an open book. In Revelation 22 and 10, God said, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. So when you have finished all the epistles, and you have enjoyed all the ups and downs of the church of Jesus Christ, then you come to the last book, un unsealed, open book, study it to be blessed and to be, and to be in, 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 enriched. Therefore, we can expect to understand the book of the Revelation. It's not sealed. There's no curtain drawn in front of it. So therefore, we can expect to understand the teachings that are placed in there just, just for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Lord Jesus saw in the, in the seven existing churches at that time uh, that are mentioned in the book, of, the, the book of Revelation. I have visited personally every site of those seven churches. 
And uh, our lesson to, at this moment has to do with what Christ knew about those churches. And I thought that was very, very exciting. In fact, I hadn't known of anyone else, you know, going through it and working with it on, 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 that, on that particular basis. Let, let us begin in, in the Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. He that hath an ear. <laughs> How many got an ear? Ain't you glad you got one? Glory to God. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To, to, to him to him that overcometh will I give, give to eat of the true of the tree of life. If you overcome. Put a little circle around the word overcome. We just live in a world today of falling down. Uh, live in a world today that uh, preachers, uh, ministers, it is amazing to me to see men uh, uh, forfeit churches of several thousand people to just to commit adultery and lose their whole thing, including 25 or 30 years of ministry. It just, it's, it's beyond human comprehension, excepting the temptation of the evil one, that if you give your attention in the wrong direction, you will come up wrong. That thing which just draws your attention all the time, you better work on it. Uh, you you got to keep your attention positive in the Word of God, studying the Word of God, and in human need. A human need. It, 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 it is so easy just to uh, cluster ourselves in a, in a position where we don't see human need. We must live on planet Earth and look around us and bless all of those that have a great need. All right. Uh, the, first, the first church, uh, you, you have a one there, is the church in Ephesus. Right beside it is the local name given to that town uh, today. I, w I was there. I've looked through those temples of Diana. Houses of prostitution were right next door to them. They went, they went, they went together. And uh, it's, it's uh, an awesome, it's an awesome thing to look at today. And oh, great is Diana the Ephesians. <laughs> yeah, she's nothing, completely nothing. They had missed the whole, the whole thing. In Revelation 2, at 1, it says, Under the church, under the angel of the church, and that word angel there could mean two things, really. It could be messenger. On, on, under the messenger of the church, it could be the pastor that he is addressing, or it could be a special angel that watches over churches, that we, we may have an angel that watches over our congregation right here. But who, who, whoever it was, he, he was, he was responsible. And that me, makes me want to say, well, it must have been a human pastor at that time because God will hold him responsible for what he says to that congregation. He says, well, now write these things to Ephesus. These, these things saith, uh, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know, that that's the name of the lesson, I know thy works. If you think that God doesn't know the Presbyterians and the Methodists and the Baptists and the Pentecostals and the Catholics and the Jews and all the rest of them, then you're wrong. God does know. He says, I know your works and I know your labor. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Now, you better take this personal today. God knows the works that go on in this place. He knows the labor that goes on in this place. And he says, I know your patience. How, 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 how you cannot bear them that are evil. Isn't that a beautiful church? We, we bear the evil, you know. We permit the evil. Uh, he says, you can't bear the evil. Until evil is obnoxious to you, you're not on the right side of the fence. As long as you tolerate evil and say, well, not too bad, you're wrong. Evil is bad always, not part of the time. And if you tolerate it, and if you give uh, a place to it, you're going to find yourself in the wrong place with God. <clears throat> and you, th th those that are evil, and, and thou, 
Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. Now, now you ought to put a circle around the word tried. There, there, there are people who think they are above uh, others judging them. But in the first Corinthians chapter 14, it says if a man prophesies, the other to stand back and judge that to see if it's coming from God or if it's coming from his own mind. He, he says, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and, and, uh, and have found them to be liars. And so the magnificent ruins of Ephesus that are there today uh, near this modern town that I've stayed in personally, that at the city limits is the great temple of Diana and that the people worshipped her that she was their goddess. And uh, that group of people that love God and serve God in that city, they departed from idolatry, they departed from sin, that they might live for their Lord Jesus Christ. And then it says that the church in Ephesus <clears throat> was possibly the largest of the seven churches. It was given such strong emphasis. And among the, the ruins is a large theater, which probably seated more than 25,000 people. And, and there, were, there were several heathen temples and uh, very elaborate baths, Roman baths, type of baths there, and, and which they were just places of, of lust and, 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 and sin. But Paul lived there for two years. He didn't just hold a three-day meeting. He lived there for two years. You find that in Acts 19 and verse 10. And, and this commanded by the, by the, and, and this, uh, continued by the space of two years, uh, uh, to all them which are in Asia, he preached to them the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it was a place he gave a lot of attention to. And God says, now I know your works and your labors and whatever you do. And you're, uh, number two, you have the, the, the city called Smyrna. And then there's this right by it is the Izmir. I have lived in Izmir for a week at a time. Uh, in Revelation 2 and 8, it says, Under the angel of the church uh, in Smyrna write, These things uh, saith the first and the last. Uh, the Lord Jesus addressed himself in a different way to all these churches, which was very interesting. Which was dead and now I'm alive. I know. That's what this lesson's about. God does know. God knows more about this place where we are sitting right now than any of us know. He knows the secrets of all men and all women's hearts. And he knows the things that are mysterious, strange about you. And what you do and say when you shouldn't be doing it nor saying it. Some people say things against the church. And you don't know that you're talking straight against the Lord Jesus because it's his church. And that you may only have half, you only may have knowledge about most things. And that you need to look on both sides of the coin if you want to know what kind of coin it is. And God knows both sides. He says, now just, I want to know your, I, I, know, I know your works and I know the tribulation that you have gone through. And I know also the poverty. That's something. Now, now Ephesus didn't have that, but, but Smyrna did. A, a poverty. That thou art rich and, and I know thy blasphemy uh, from which, uh, from, from which say they are Jews and they are not, but they are from the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which, which shall suffer. I don't think fear should have any part of our total lives. Three weeks ago, we were far, far inland China. A couple of thousand miles, I mean. We were, we were not on the border. They said I was the second white person that had ever been there to that place. And uh, those people did not know fear. Yes, they were chased by the police all the time. 
They, they had a very strange way of getting me in that place and out of that place so the police would not capture me. Uh, they said, uh, fear none of those things uh, which thou shalt suffer. Uh, behold, the devil uh, shall cast some of you in prison, and he has. And, and ye may be tried, and, and ye shall have tribulation uh, in those days. But be thou faithful. Now, we had that same uh, principle in our first church, you know, uh, of being faithful. And he said, be thou faithful unto death. That's a long time, isn't it? You don't be faithful halfway. You're faithful all the way. Right up until the Lord takes us home to be with him. And if you, he says, if you do that, I will give you a crown of life. Northwest, 50 miles from Ephesus, is this town that we call Smyrna. Uh, today it is a modern port city of Izmir uh, with a population of nearly half a million. Uh, it, it, it is Turkey's third largest city. And it is a marketplace, uh, both by boat, by train, and so forth. And it covers a large area and has a very highly uh, crowded, congested uh, downtown area. Smyrna represents the second church period, which continued to the time of Constantinople. The first church period was for the first 300 years. Uh, and and uh, Smyrna is remembered <clears throat> as the church of the persecution. Uh, that always happens, you know. Uh, the kind of church you're sitting in today was persecuted when I was a boy. I, I just almost couldn't go to school when I was a boy because I don't know why they brought religion up so often, but I was always the tail end because my mother belonged to this, this kind of a church. And they would always point at me and say, that, that's, that's his church. They climb the wall, they roll on the floor, and they, they, they spit out scorpions, and they do all kinds of things. And, uh, and I wasn't converted, you know. And so when, when we walked out the front door, you, you, you saw boys laying all over the ground because I was whipping about six of them. I was, I was so angry inside. And I'd tell my mother, I'd say, Mother, I just wished you had brought joined the Presbyterian Church, so that sure would help me a lot at school. So they, they are highly respected down there, but says so your bunch that you go to, they are not respected at all. And she said, son, the Bible says be faithful unto death. I said, oh dear God, I've already died. <laughs> so the Lord's already taken care of that. But he hadn't, of course. <clears throat> uh, God wants faithfulness. And every new, every new revival suffers the same. It don't matter if it's 2,000 years ago. Martin Luther suffered more than anybody that you've ever seen in your personal life. John Wesley suffered more. You just, you ought to read that big book that I printed on John Wesley's family. Uh, it is an amazing how, how, how the Wesley family suffered indignities and, and how they called him terrible names even though he was a college graduate uh, because he had something new. He had heard from heaven, he had heard from God, and nobody, and nobody liked it. The third church is, is, is called the, the Church of Pergamos, uh, and, that, and, and that Bergama still exists there today. God says uh, in, in Revelation 2 and 12, And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write these things, which uh, the one who has a sharp sword with, with, with two edges, I know. Now, that's what this lesson is about, that God does know all spiritual situations, all spiritual growth, all spiritual backslidings. He says, I know your works and where you dwelleth, even, even where Satan's seat is. That word seat there is throne. Even where Satan's throne, you live and dwell where Satan's throne is. Now, there are places on this earth today where Satan has set up his throne. And if you, you go and work labor for God there, and you have more persecution there than you will anywhere else, but you've invaded the throne room of, the, uh, of, of Satan, and you can expect him to fight uh, much, much harder. Uh, where Satan's sown is, and, and, and thou holdest fast in that great, put a little circle around there, that even though they were in the area where, 
where the devil had a throne set up to rule the people. Uh, he says, you have held fast my name, and you have not denied my faith. Woo! Isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? You, you, you held my name. You held my faith. Uh, even in those days were in Antipas was my faithful martyr. So they had killed some of the church. They had killed some of the church there. Uh, who was slain uh, among you where Satan dwelleth. They brought that in twice. And so here we have a church that uh, you might say in, in history from about the time of Constantine uh, to the beginning of the papacy. And uh, it, 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 it has a, a citadel of Satan dwelling over that thing. And how glad we are that that church existed. And that same type of church exists today. All over the face of this earth, they're progressing in different uh, areas of the church, growing from Ephesus right, right straight through. They, 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 they're in their beginning stage, they're in the fulfilling stage, and they're in their uh, various stages until they go all the way through. Your number four, uh, it, it says Thyatira in uh, Revelation 2.18, under the angel of the church in Thyatira, these things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I'll tell you how, 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 what Jesus looks like and what you will look like when you're resurrected. And he says, I know, isn't that something? I know your works. And, and, uh, and so, and he says, and also I have watched your charity and, and your service and your faith. Isn't that something? He even looked to see how much they'd given to the poor. Isn't that amazing? I have watched your, your, your charity and so forth. And so, uh, this, this church represents a period of about 450 years uh, to the Reformation time. And it's a very, very important part of our, of our church history. Your number five is the church in Sardis, where in Revelation 3 and 1 it says, And unto the, unto the angel, he, you see, he won't leave out that leadership. You can't imagine that religious leaders in this country, they're going to be judged by God one day. You can't imagine it. The people are what their leaders make them to be. Uh, they're, to, they're to blame for the spirituality or the non-spirituality. And a lot of them won't even accept it. They say, let the people do as they please. Well, you'll get judged for that too. Uh, he says, under the church in Sardis write these things. Uh, he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know, I know your works, uh, that, 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 that you have a name, that you're alive, but you're dead. You see, there are many church denominations today that have the wrong name on them. There, there's some of them say they're Pentecostal and they had not seen Pentecost in 25 years. They don't know anything about it at all. They don't pray for the sick. Uh, they, 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 don't, they don't have the infilling of the Holy Ghost, all they got's a name. And, and so uh, whatever name you may have, and it's a shame to bear a name like the word Luther when you don't go through the same problems and sorrows that Luther went through. And so uh, it is so easy to carry a name that doesn't bear the truth in it. And he says, you have a name that you're living, but says you're not. Uh, you are dead. It says, be watched, or be watchful, and, and strengthen the things which remain. That's something. Take what you got and start getting it stronger. Uh, take what you have and start using it and start, and start getting stronger by it. Uh, uh, the, the, and, and strengthen that which is ready to die. <laughs> I hope there's nothing around you ready to die, but we're, we're ready to live. Say live. Yeah, yeah we're ready to live. <laughs> for, I, for, for I have not found thy works perfect. Isn't that something? God speaking to a church. He says, I have not found your works to be perfect. And uh, uh, you can study the rest of it there. The church in Philadelphia was church number six. In the book of Revelation, uh, in, in chapter 3 and verse 7, and the church that is in Philadelphia, write these things, um, uh, saith he that is holy, that is true, 
Now he that, that hath the, the key of David, he openeth and no man shutteth, and, and, uh, and he closeth and no man openeth. And so he says, uh, I want to talk to you. And he says, I know your works. And as for, as for us, say, you know your works. God knows. Say God knows. God wants us to realize that we know. So you have here the, 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 the church of brotherly love, and we thank God for it. And your number seven is the Laodicean church. And, and uh, he says, I know your works. That's verse 15. I know your works, that you're neither cold nor hot. And I would that you were cold or hot. And because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And that is your final church period uh, when you will have people who belong to a church, but they won't have, they will not have the anointing and the Spirit of God upon them, nor the holiness that makes them to be part of the body of Christ. It's time to be like Jesus. Can you say amen?